Today is Monday, the 28th of April, 2023, Memorial Day. Uh, getting a late start. Uh, as you can see, the leading edges are on the airplane. I won't talk too much about that because that was episode 53. I'll put a link to it in the description or a card up here or here. I'm moving on to a completely new phase of construction. Um, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, the van's wing construction, it might look like I'm not done with the leading edges. That's because Vans uses a wet wing uh, fuel system. So the leading, the inboard leading edges um, are actually the fuel tanks. And so the next uh, couple of weeks probably will be consumed with trying to make sure that I have these uh, fuel tanks completely sealed up, airtight, fuel tight, and ready to be mounted to the wings. So. <clears throat> Today, I'm probably not going to get a whole lot done. I want to make sure that I'm following the plans carefully. There's a really good video covering the wing construction uh, right here. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but there's a ton of prep work and fitting that has to be done before you get to the part that this video describes. So I'm going to start on that today. And I think first up in the instructions is uh, building and fastening some Z brackets that will be um, how the tanks mount to the spar web. That's what we're going to do. Uh, a little cleanup in the shop, get the hardware organized and get going. So yeah, let's get after it. Uh, episode 54 is on the way. While he's getting organized, I'll try to give a better description of what exactly um, needs to be done in building the fuel tank. Um, there's a lot going on. Um, in the fuel tank build, as you can see here, um, the construction is very similar to the leading edges, which are quite simple, but there's a lot more um, structure and components um, involved in this build. And it doesn't mount flush to the, with the web of the spar. So the back of the fuel tank is closed out by a baffle and then on the back side of that baffle are a bunch of these aluminum spacers, these Z-shaped spacers. And that's what I'm going to get working on today is um, getting those ready to be mounted to the spar, mounted to the fuel tank or the baffle. Um, so there's some, some countersinking involved in mounting a bunch of nut plates. It seems like a simple enough job, but uh, what we're going to see here very shortly is that um, two of the, uh, rather one per wing of those spacers, the nut plate is mounted to the spar. The rest of them are mounted to the spacer itself. The reason that the nut plate is mounted to the spar on the most inboard spacer is because it's inside a very narrow space in the wing walk, which if you look behind me on the camera there, you can see how closely those those ribs uh, where the wing walk are, are placed together. And so um, you put the, you mount the nut plates there rather than trying to put a bolt head through there because it would be very difficult to work with a wrench. Well, let me tell you, it's very difficult to work with a bucking bar <laughs> to get those things mounted. So right here, I'm basically just spending a good amount of time proving to myself that uh, all of these spacers are indeed symmetrical. <laughs> And that I have enough of them, uh, 12 total, six per wing of these spacers that are um, going to have the nut plates mounted to them. And then, as I mentioned before, one each of the most inboard spacer where the nut plate is mounted to the spar. Um, I spent a lot of time on the plans, making sure that I understood what I was looking at, because several of the, of the little call outs on the plans look look very similar. Um, here I'm getting the, the micro stop uh, countersink cage set for the proper depth, testing on a piece of scrap, which I created out of a real airplane part, <laughs> which you saw a few episodes ago. Um, it's a good idea, even if the most recent time you used the countersink was for this same type of rivet and depth, to just go ahead and test it again uh, fine tune it. Um, 
the you know the countersink bit does dull over time and so it's going to change how it works you just don't want to make a mistake it's okay to go too shallow it's not okay to go too deep the two outboard most uh, or rather upper and lower holes that are close to those big reinforcement bars need to be kind of freehand countersunk um, because you can't fit that um, countersink cage next to it so you just it's kind of a slow process take your time to make sure that you're cutting a nice round hole and to the proper depth and so it's just a lot of back and forth testing it with the rivet doing it again testing it with the rivet doing it again but it, it all works out in the end um then we'll get into the riveting in that tight space and uh i'm telling you i have three three different bucking bars um two are quite narrow one is really narrow the problem and you'll see once we look underneath the the web of the spar there a problem is that on the back side of that spar not only are you work it's it's always a little bit tight quarters with nut plates because you have the nut plate itself very close to where the rivet head is going to be um you're reaching into a tight space if you've ever seen when homer simpson get his hand gets his hand stuck in a vending machine because he won't let go of uh, whatever piece he grabbed that's kind of what this feels like trying to work your i can get my hand in that space or i can get a bucking bar in that space but can i get my hand and a bucking bar in that space and then here you see what i'm talking about there's a reinforcement plate on that uh aft side of the spar that sits very close to the two outside um which and it's the reason that those things are kind of turned at an angle those nut plates so trying to work close to that plus close to the nut plate itself it's just hard to find room for the bucking bar to fit flush over the tail of the rivet without interfering with those one of those other pieces this was incredibly frustrating and it completely took the piss out of me i spent an hour and a half i think uh mounting six nut plates which should be super simple um i probably had to drill out three or four rivets that were and the disappointing thing about the rivets that had to drill out was that they were set properly but maybe just a little underset so i needed to give them one more whack and then they got effed up and <laughs> had to take them out so here I'm very happily done um, mounting those nut plates and I get into the very easy business of just countersinking um, all 12 of these, um, I want to call them Z brackets, but all 12 of these spacers. Uh, yeah, so the rest of the day here is just countersinking and countersinking and countersinking. This also um, can be a fairly speedy process. However, the two outboard, this is something to pay attention to if, if, if this is something that you're getting ready to do and you, and you haven't done it yet. If you're working near an edge with a uh, countersink cage, it's easy to where the whole diameter of the counter circumference of the countersink cage doesn't fit flush on the material because there's not material there you could very easily tip over the edge and make an oblong hole so the on these little pieces on the the two outboard holes you just have to kind of work slowly and creep up on the proper depth making sure that you're keeping that countersink cage and the, the countersink bit um, perpendicular to the material so i don't know that's a lot of description that may not be very clear just be careful <laughs> that's all you gotta say be careful uh quick deburring on all of these parts and then i'll spend maybe an hour uh setting um what do you have 24 nut plates no more than that 36 something like that public math i'm actually quite good at math but um, i'm also quite tired uh yeah three nut plates per uh 12 uh per 12 uh spacers that i still want to call z brackets 
and that's how the day finished up. So thankfully, uh, this was simple work, really hard to mess up, satisfying to finish the day on a high note. It's crazy that those six nut plates just kicked my ass. <laughs> it was so frustrating, and the heat doesn't help. Uh, I'm in East Texas, and it's getting hot, and uh, that garage, there's no way to keep that place cool, and that's how it's going to be for months and months of building these wings. So um, today I will move on to... Huh. Oh, I know. Uh, today is going to be about the uh, stiffeners, the skins inside the, the wing, um, inside the fuel tanks have stiffeners. The leading edge, the leading edges that we already did, they don't have stiffeners inside, but you know, you've got a lot of weight in those, um, in those fuel tanks with all that fuel sloshing around. So, uh, what, yeah, like I said, uh, a lot more structure, but stiffeners are simple, simple work that we've done before on the, um, elevators and, uh, the rudder. So I'll be happy to, to do that today. Simple work. And I guess I have to look a little bit further ahead in plans and probably start taking, the uh, sealant out of the freezer so it's ready to work with the next couple of days which is exciting and also a little bit nerve-wracking i'll be looking at that um that video from vans again i've probably watched it three times through all the way i'm sure i'll watch it three times through all the way again just to feel confident that i'm doing things correctly as i'm getting that tank put together and sealed up but that wraps it up for episode 54 um we'll see you tomorrow with episode 55 thanks again for watching like and subscribe youtube -y stuff thank you so much